So obviously we're all really happy with the result. Um, it's incredible at Monaco, starting third and fourth, you wouldn't then expect to go on to win the race and to get the double podium. So that was amazing. Um, I think whenever we reflect on a race, like as a strategist, we're always thinking about all the things we could have done better. So there's still a whole list of things that we could have done better, but I don't think we could have got a better result. Um, so yeah, that's amazing. And it's a great achievement for the whole team. Yeah, so I think that's something that we're obviously quite um, keen on at Red Bull is to kind of make those decisions be the racers because we are racing after all and that's something we love doing. Um, so it's something that historically I think we've got a bit of a name for. Um, but it's also important that we don't always do that and that we judge the situation and then make the right call based on that so that we're not always kind of being aggressive for the sake of it. But I think we get the balance right. Yeah, so um, I think it's incredibly exciting. You almost do sit on the edge of your seat when you've made a decision, particularly in Monaco. It wasn't that clear how much ahead of the Ferraris we would come out of the pits. So you make that split second decision, but then you've got maybe 20 seconds, which sounds like hardly any time to us right now. But in a race sitting there waiting to see if your decision's paid off, that can feel like a lifetime. So in terms of simulations, we actually run billions of them. So it's a lot. There's a lot going on. Um, and then, yeah, decisions, it will just it just depends on the race. But yeah, calculations and simulations, there's literally billions because before we've even got there, we've had to kind of simulate lots of different scenarios, lots of different tire behaviors, lots of different paces. And then throughout the weekend, we're just um, like refining our models and getting closer and closer to what will actually happen in the race. And then even during the race, we're running a lot of simulations live. So, yeah, it really is a lot. <laughs> so here in the operations room, we have quite a lot of the strategy department will be supporting then the one person that's sitting on the pit wall at the race. Um, and we do. So we have, uh, everyone has quite defined roles. We know what we're looking at. So in the operations room, there'll be one person looking at each driver specifically, and they'll know everything about that driver all the time, where they're going to come out. Um, so they're completely just focused on those drivers. And then we also have someone looking, uh, a lot of students are in helping us, listening to all the radio, and we have someone coordinating that and all the video footage and passing on any information to us that's relevant. And then on the pit wall, we're kind of getting that, all the information about the drivers, and we're looking at that big picture. So how can I win the race based on all this information? And the idea is that the person on the pit wall is free to do that. They don't have to think too much about all the data um, and what's going on behind the scenes. We'll get the results and then make those bigger decisions. Um, and before the race even starts, it's very routine. So we have like set meetings that we'll have every race with the drivers, with the engineers and with Christian and Adrian to discuss what all our plans are. And so everybody's really in the loop um, going into a race. But the race itself is never really routine. Um, lots of things happen, but we've just got to be ready to adapt and know what we're going to do in those different situations. most definitely it means we got access to so much information and we also have kind of so much more um, people power so yeah we can be listening to every team's radio we can be watching every team's on board we can be um, looking at all the numbers in detail and have that all passed on to the pit wall um, in seconds it's like being in the same room that you know there's no delays um, so yeah it's definitely an incredible um, an incredible room and just an incredible support on the pit wall. I don't think you'd be able to do the job without it. Yeah, so the race engineers obviously work really closely with their individual drivers. They understand them and how to give them the information they need. As strategists, we also then brief them. So we have briefings throughout the weekend, the main ones being the pre-qualifying and the pre-race, where basically it's we find it's good for it to be more like a discussion so we'll say this is our plans and we'll ask for people's opinions on things and make sure people are involved and know the reasoning behind things we're going to do because we find it really useful to be able to work as a team and get the most points as a team so that 
involves the drivers working together and being on board with all the plans. Um, so that's something we, we talk about a lot. We keep um, all our plans, so we have all our, basically we have like tables of things that happen, so we do. Um, and for each race we will, after a race, we'll kind of go through with a fine tooth comb every decision that was made, could we do this better, could we do that better? And then, and we'll write a report on that so that then the next year we come to that race, we can go through that and we can understand if we were happy with all our decisions and if not, what we would have done better. And so we can incorporate that. So the more races we have at a track, the more we learn and the more that kind of carries on to the rest of the season. So yes, we do store everything and take everything on board when making our future plans. Straight away, really. Um, so Will and I kind of, uh, rotate the races that we do which really helps so while the other one is still writing up the race they've just done the next one of us is already preparing the next race and so that's why it works really well because it kind of shares the workload well um, yeah so like I'm already thinking about Canada today for example I did used to watch the races and I was just really interested in cars from a young age, just playing with cars from like three or four um, and interested in how things work. So I really, really wanted to be an engineer. And then I was fortunate to go to a school that was really encouraging of engineering and gave you a lot of opportunities to kind of work with industry and do different projects. So I definitely knew that's what I wanted to do before university. So um, I wasn't sure if maybe I deserved my place in Formula One. Um, but then when I started applying for roles, I, I realized, you know, that's not what it's about. It's about thinking the right way and being the right kind of person and your enthusiasm and passion. Um, and that's how you get to work here. And then, yeah, stay here for 13 years. So. I think uh, because it is quite a male-dominated environment, there's definitely challenges that come from that, um, which I've, like, well, hopefully I've overcome everything now. Um, but, yeah, I would say I've never had any, like, particularly bad experiences, but I think there's a lot of people that maybe don't have the confidence in you to do a job. As a strategist, you've got to tell people what to do, and they've got to listen to you. And so it's building up that trust, and I think, unfortunately, as a woman, that was harder. Um, but... Now I'm there, I've got the respect and everything, and I hope that other young women who want to get into the sport will see that you can do it and will embrace it and we'll see more diversity. Uh, so I won't go into too much detail, because obviously we need to be top secret. Um, but basically it's going to come down to the graining, so that's what we've been finding this year. There's a lot more graining on the tyres, and it's been quite... Um, inconsistent so it's hard to maybe predict how much graining there's going to be so really it's going to be all about the tyres learning about them throughout the weekend so that we're prepared for the race.